Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in and watching the first installment of what I hope is a really exciting and robust project. I thought for our first issue, um, we could talk about a painting by Mark Rothko. And I know when we think about artists who are underrepresented or who we don't see that often, Rothko probably isn't someone that comes to mind. In many ways, he's one of the most famous um, artists of the modern era. Um, but I wanted to talk about him because I think that the way that we often talk about Rothko misses one of the key points of his art, and in my mind is what makes his work so powerful. Uh, so a little bit of background on Mark Rothko. He was born actually with the name Marcus Rothkowitz in Dvinsk, Russia, which is now in Latvia, um, and he moved to the United States with his family to escape the pogroms, which were riots against Jews that were happening in Russia at the time. And when he first moved to Oregon, he and his family didn't speak any English. They only spoke um, Russian and a bit of Hebrew and Yiddish. And so a lot of his early works are about that sort of immigrant experience and coming to a new country and not understanding how to communicate with people. And not just on a basic level, he has paintings of people in subways and trying to navigate stores and markets, but also on a deep emotional level. He's consistently frustrated with his inability to express deep emotional thought. And so as his work progresses, he's moving towards um, what can be considered a universal language, and we can argue whether or not that's effective. And his works become more and more abstracted. So what starts with pictures of actual people and places doing things, um, he's constantly stripping away references that he feels are culturally contingent, that you would need to have some sort of context to understand, to create a work of art um, that can convey deep emotional thought from one person to another, moving beyond the barriers imposed by language and culture. Um, and so when he's talking about his works, he says that um, a painting is not a picture of an experience, but an experience. It is the experience. He is trying to create not something that we sit at and look at passively, but an object of communion between the artist, the object, and the viewer. And so let's turn to this painting now. If you see a Rothko painting in person, they're far larger than they look in this projection here. Um, this is an untitled work. It's actually not displayed in any museum at the moment. And so um, this is a really exciting part about this project is we can see these works and talk about them even though they're not currently on display. Um, and so if you were to go up to a Rothko painting, he recommends that you stand six inches away from it so that you are fully immersed in the, the color of the painting. And what's interesting about working with them in projection is that you can stand and really be encompassed by the painting. And so if you were to go and visit it in person, you stand in front of it and the color reflects onto you and you enter into the space of the painting um, and by extension are entering into the world that Rothko created. Um, so he says again of his paintings that, um, and his work in general, you've got sadness in you, I've got sadness in me. And my works of art are places where the two sadnesses can meet and therefore both of us can feel less sad. And this is more than just trying to create a sense of comfort through art, it's actually a deep theological and spiritual proclamation about the nature of individual souls. Um, Rothko is deeply influenced by notions of Jewish mysticism and Kabbalah, um, an overarching theme of which is the unity of all individual souls and the universe. And so one of the foundational elements of this sort of form of thinking is the notion of simsum, or veiled um, existence. And so there are multiple veils in the world, and we reveal unity by lifting up these veils and seeing how um, each individual person is really in union with every other. And so when we stand in front of a painting by Mark Rothko, especially one like this, we have two different color panels on a single colored background. And the top panel and bottom panel are weighted as if they were themselves these veils. And if you stand in front of them long enough, 
you'll see that the borders around each of the panels is blurred. So he's painting with a watered down um, paint on unprimed canvas. So normally a canvas has a white um, layer on the back that the paint's applied to so it doesn't bleed. He leaves that out so that the colors bleed into one another. And so it creates this illusion both of movement and of a kinetic energy, but also the idea that these two veils will float apart so that the viewer can step into the single unified space of the background and join in communion with the artist who created this object um, and experience the same feelings and emotions that Rothko had. So when a lot of people talk about Rothko's paintings, they talk about him in terms of color and the relationships of color to one another and reactions of the color in the eye. Um, and he certainly had these things in mind and was aware of them, but they're not the primary concern of his work. So he even says himself, if you are only moved by color relationships, you are, moved, you are missing the point. I'm interested in expressing big emotions, tragedy, ecstasy, doom. And the fact that a lot of people break down and cry when confronted with my pictures shows that I communicate those basic human emotions. The people who weep before my pictures are having the same religious experience that I had when I painted them. And so he's not trying to show us the way that colors interact with one another, but to use colors to create an object of communication, to create a space where people who speak different languages and have different cultural backgrounds and resonances with different objects and subjects can enter into a purely abstract space and communicate their innermost and deepest emotions to one another in an unmediated and unfiltered way. And so if you ever have a chance to visit an, a museum and see one of these paintings in person, I would encourage you to get up as close to it as the guards will allow and spend a few minutes to just really let the colors and the paint wash over you and see how it makes you feel. Um, Something I'd be really interested to hear from you in the comments is if you have seen one of these pictures before, if you feel that it was effective. Maybe you think that what I'm saying makes absolutely no sense, and when you stand there you see a bunch of blocks and then you want to move on. Um, personally, I find it incredibly effective. When I was at Yale, there were a few Rothko paintings in the museum there, and before I had exams, I would go and sit in front of them, um, just sort of to put myself in a relaxing headspace. Um, but I'm a weird art history nerd, and I like to do those sorts of things. Um, so if you have any comments or questions, I'd love to hear from you. Um, and I'm excited to continue sharing new pieces of art with you.